You've heard all about it. Inflation, recession, an economic future that's uncertain at best. We asked our John Dickerson to turn to the pros. In the world of economics, there's the macro. I would say for sure the economy has overheated. And the micro. Prices are up, interest rates are up, and the gas prices are up. And you can understand why so many people are worried. The big picture. Everybody is saying, where is the economy going? And I think a good point to make is it's, it's hard to predict the future, but right now it's hard to predict the present. And the smaller picture for each household. Even if you're doing well, when you hear recession, when you hear inflation at a 40-year high, that makes you feel like, whoa, what's going to happen to me? To look into the economic fog from different angles, we talked with Lloyd Blankfein, formerly the CEO of Goldman Sachs, and now its senior chairman, and Michelle Singletary, author and Washington Post personal finance columnist. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship. Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, announced on Wednesday that the Fed is again raising interest rates to combat inflation, which in June stood at 9.1 percent over a year ago, the biggest increase in more than 40 years. It is essential that we bring inflation down to our 2 percent goal if we are to have a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. And on Thursday, the government reported that the gross domestic product fell for the second straight quarter, a signal that the economy may be in a recession, though we'll have to wait months to see if the economists assign that formal term. There's a not insubstantial chance that we have a recession. I don't think it's baked in the cake. Some people say we're already in a recession. A lot of people say a soft landing is very, very unlikely. Soft landing. That's what the Federal Reserve is trying to engineer raising rates to cool the economy without initiating a job-killing recession. It's very hard to do. In most recessions, you don't have a soft landing. The Fed tightens and jobs are lost. Companies, you know, not only reduce their hiring plans, they shrink. We're starting from a different place. The financial system is in good shape. There's more jobs and there are people to fill those jobs. Constantly, people are hearing about how bad things are. How much attention should they pay to what the Federal Reserve does, what the gross national product is, when they're making their financial decisions? It is very important to pay attention to it. What the Fed is doing is trying to beat back inflation. And so by raising rates, it's going to cost you more if you need a mortgage. It's going to cost you more if you need an auto loan. It's going to cost you more if you are carrying credit card debt. So how did we get here? Do you think we're in a classical economics 101 moment, or is the current situation, the economy, the result of the pandemic, supply chains that were disrupted because of the pandemic, or are those really the same thing? Well, 50 years from now, when they write about the history of the period, they'll, they'll put it in its place and it'll fit nicely, neatly in the pattern. But where I'm sitting now, it seems you know, quite different. We shut down the economy. People were kept out of their jobs. It was like we shut off a valve. It wasn't the natural order of things. The unemployment rate now stands at 3.6 percent, about where it was before the pandemic, an almost 50-year low. Yet 58 percent of Americans are believed to be living paycheck to paycheck. That's the category that is the most difficult. It makes me tear up because people are like, well, what do you advise for them? And I, I wish I had a pack answer, but I don't, other than you got to spend smarter. Save whatever you can. And perhaps, you know, housing, that's one of the biggest areas of people's budget. If you can live with someone or have a roommate. Singletary and her family live that advice. Her three 20-something kids live at home, saving their money instead of putting it toward rent. But if you're feeling comfortable, says Singletary, don't take rash action. Selling stock that over time will rebound if you keep it and keep spending. She worries the public might slip into a doom loop, which will scare the country into an even worse economic spot. Those are the folks we need to not panic because we need you to spend. We need you to go out to the restaurants. And when you go out, tip that server more than 20%. Yeah. You know, be generous. You can afford to be generous. Because if they pull back, the very thing that we're trying to avoid, which is a deep recession, will happen. We might go into recession, we might not. But if I were managing the risk, 
in my old job managing the risk of a big building, or in my household. If I thought there was a 30% chance, let alone a 60% chance of a severe slowdown, you know, I'd be starting to get very conservative about what I spent. What difference does it make whether Lloyd Blankfein thinks there's a 70% chance or a 30% chance? A 30% chance is a very big risk to go to sleep with every night and worry about what might happen in the next week or the next couple of months. Singletary is the director of a ministry at her church, where she helps parishioners with their finances. Recession or no recession, she has one consistent sermon. Now, one thing I hope that we learn now and through every type of economy is to not rely so much on debt. We are living the American dream on borrowed money. Yeah. We borrow for our homes. We borrow for our cars. We borrow to send our kids. We borrow to go on vacation. We even borrow to eat a meal out when we put it on a credit card. And then when we have an economic downturn, people don't have a cushion. And so I try to get people to hate debt. I hate debt. I hate debt so much that if it was a person, I'd slap it. That's how much I hate it. Could fear of a recession actually cause a recession? Right now we're on a recession or the front end of a recession. I'm tired of- Singletary and Blank Fine agree on this. There is a glut of economic and political punditry that makes people jittery. While you're living in the micro, they advise taking the macro, long-term view. Because over time, the U.S. economy has always recovered. The system we have is kind of nimble and resilient. You're always anxious about things that are unresolved compared to things that happened in the past that are already in the can and already in the history books and you know the world didn't come to an end. Don't panic. Well, no, you know what? Panic. Go ahead. Scream. Ah! Go ahead. Go ahead. Let it out. Because we shouldn't tell people not to panic. It's human to panic when you see all these headlines. But don't act on that panic in a way that will be worse for you. 